Okay, question one. Today we are living better, safer, and longer than we would have a hundred years ago. This is due to A, computer games, B, sophisticated medical technology, C, improvements in sanitation, water quality, food safety, disease control, and housing conditions, or D, McDonald's. Um, gee, this, this is a hard one. You are playing for your future, so take your time. C. C is correct. The greatest improvement in our quality of life is a direct result of advances in the science of environmental health. Check it out. Environmental health is concerned with all the physical, biological and social conditions which can impact on people's health and well-being. Noise, air and water pollution, exotic diseases, toxic waste, stress and high density living. The 21st century is throwing the lot at us. So who are you going to call? An environmental health officer, that's who. Today's EHOs are highly trained professionals with wide ranging responsibilities. And they're everywhere, from cafe strips to tattoo parlours and prisons. From clubs to remote communities. From toxic spills to natural disasters. In the air and underwater. EHOs are employed by state and federal departments, including health departments, environmental agencies, quarantine services, and local councils. In the private sector, they work for major airlines and hotel chains, as well as large catering and retail organisations. But enough talk. Let's meet some EHOs. I'm the Environmental Health Officer for the City of Subiaco. My job has all the variety and challenges that you'd expect from a densely populated, vibrant, and cosmopolitan inner city area. This is a major holiday destination and people come here to enjoy the coast. Everything from swimming and boating to crabbing and fishing. It's my responsibility to ensure that the environment does not adversely impact on people and vice versa. I work for a large local council. My interest is in health promotion. You could say that my job is to change the way people think about their health. What does your work involve? On any given day, I could be handling resident inquiries. Providing training in safe food handling. Carrying out food premises inspections. Discussing with architects the health requirements for a proposed restaurant. Or ensuring compliance with the Food Standards Code so that customers know exactly what they're getting. My work is largely project based. I identify need in the community and if I can prove my case, I generally run with it. For example, I identified the need for a concise, jargon-free booklet which dealt with a wide range of women's health issues. It was a great success and led to a booklet on men's health. That led to one on young men's health. I've received a great response, heaps of letters and requests for the books coming from all over Australia. I see myself as a catalyst to make things happen. My work can involve handling ratepayer inquiries, sampling seafood to make sure that it's safe, Checking that the waterways aren't being overstressed. Looking out for toxic algal blooms and harmful bacteria. And assessing caravan parks. In fact, the further you get away from the metropolitan area, the more diverse the job becomes. What are you doing right now? Right now, I'm at Subiaco Oval with 40,000 fans. It's my job to ensure their health and safety while they're at the game. Every year, the Oval serves over 15,000 burgers, 23,500 pies, around 67,000 buckets of chips, and close to 21,000 hot dogs. That's about 126,000 chances of getting food poisoning, but it's my job to ensure that doesn't happen. Here I'm testing the temperature of this hot food with an infrared thermometer. 75 degrees, perfect. I also provide advice on safe food handling practices. Hat, hairnet, gloves, great. A few days before a game, I check all the access areas. As well as emergency exits and firefighting equipment. This is to ensure that any emergency doesn't become a disaster. And I'm not just responsible for the well-being of the fans. Here I'm testing the microbial levels of the pool so that the players can use the pool safely without the risk of contracting an illness such as amoebic meningitis. I'm now testing the chemical levels of the pool. 
Today I'm hunting one of the world's most dangerous creatures, the mosquito. These little suckers are responsible for more deaths worldwide than all the dangerous animals combined. Luckily in Australia, potentially fatal diseases such as dengue fever are not common. However, the Ross River virus carried by many mosquitoes is definitely no fun and there's no vaccine or cure. to find where they're breeding. They love salt marshes and there's around 600 hectares of marshes in this region. Around 30 sites are surveyed regularly in order to make a decision. This is a likely spot here. Now I have to determine what stage of the life cycle they're at and whether there's enough to be a potential health risk. Mosquito numbers depend on many factors, such as the water temperature, weather and tides. Yep, these larvae are second instars, so in this heat it'll only be a couple of days and they'll be ready to fly. We have to work quickly. In summer, the breeding cycle speeds up and can be as short as four to five days. Once they get airborne, they're much harder to control. Once I'm certain we've got a problem, I've got to choose the correct chemical to use and the best control method, which is usually aerial application of a larvicide by helicopter. All ready to go, Steve. Well, here we are on Sunday afternoon in a major shopping centre and I'm about to set up a display for Men's Health Awareness Week. Regardless of the display size, there's always a million things to do. Placing adverts, writing media releases, organising sign writers, picking up posters and pamphlets, organising display boards, meeting sponsors. Well, everything. Just a free health check today, and they do cholesterol, they do blood pressure, and they do hip to waist ratio. Your reading is 136 over 74. That's an excellent doctor for Sweden. You don't have anything to worry about. Did you know that at the turn of the century, women lived on average 3.6 years longer than men? That gap has widened to now nearly seven years. Men have a tendency to ignore their health issues, so we're helping out by bringing the information to them. This information could help save somebody's life. That's it. All over. What's next? A TV appointment for a council air improvement project. Now, first, Here's the city of Melville who are leading the way in the fight against air pollution. So people have problems with the smoke even infiltrating the houses, the washing, and it's basically we, are, we struggle to do anything about it. What? what sort of person makes a good EHO? Someone who's interested in science, health and the environment. Being comfortable with meeting and talking to people is also useful. You have to be a critical thinker. Sometimes the answer is not straight in front of you. Oh, and enjoying the outdoors is a big one. Someone who is self-motivated, has initiative and drive, and wants to make a difference. What skills do you have? I'm a good listener, I'm well organised, and I have good negotiating skills. Yeah, I certainly understand what you're saying. Good people skills are definitely handy. Sometimes you have to deal with emotional ratepayers and diffuse conflict situations. I'm a good communicator. I'm able to work with people of all ages, at all levels, and I have good organisational skills. What's the best part of your job? Lots of variety. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. The mixture of indoors and outdoors is very attractive. The job diversity and the ability to get good money. I love the variety, the scope and the opportunity to be a change merchant. How did you get into environmental health? I'd been a lab technician for a few years and decided that I needed to change to a job that was more personally challenging and satisfying. I wasn't sure about going back to study after working, but it was really worth it. 
I started doing environmental science at uni and realised there was a lot of people doing it compared to the amount of jobs available. Then I saw a speaker from environmental health and thought, wow, that sounds really good. At high school, I didn't know what I wanted to do. My dad worked in local government and arranged for me to do work experience in environmental health. I was struck by how much there was to the job. So here I am. Thanks, Dad. Ah, you having fun. For sure. There are times when it's not that great, but then in the next instant, something happens that just lifts your day. Definitely. The job is fantastic. I work with a great team and have the opportunity to actually make a difference. Absolutely. I love the creativity and the achievement. And things are happening just because I thought it was a great idea. The way to get into this well-paying, interesting and challenging career is by getting a Bachelor of Science degree in Environmental Health from Curtin University. The course is as varied and interesting as the career. It's hands-on with heaps of lab work, field work and professional experience. For further information, contact the Department of Environmental Health, Curtin University of Technology, GPO Box U1987, Perth, WA 6845. Or check out the website.